Hi, welcome to Calculating the Power of a Hypothesis Test. Examples. So in this video, we'll give two examples where we calculate the power of a hypothesis test. You can look at this video as a sequel to the video, Beta and the Power of a Hypothesis Test, where we gave the definition of the power of a hypothesis test. So the power of the test is the probability under the alternative hypothesis of rejecting the null hypothesis. If you haven't watched that video yet, we suggest you watch it before proceeding here. In the two examples we do here, we will artificially choose parameters for these problems so that we can easily obtain the results using the 68 95 99.7 rule. And if you want to know more about that, you can see the video Features of the Gaussian or Normal Distribution Part 2. Now, for more realistic problems where that rule doesn't apply, you can consult a table of the cumulative distribution function of the Gaussian or Normal Distribution. Okay, so we're going to be doing two examples. In both of those examples, we're going to be measuring some observable Q. We will denote by Q0 the value of Q under the null hypothesis, which we'll call H0, and QA will be the value of Q under the alternative hypothesis, which we'll call HA. And finally, Q measured will be the measured value of Q. Also, in both of our examples, we're going to take our measurement errors to be Gaussian. This means that Q measured will be Gaussian distributed around Q true, the true value of Q, and we're going to call the standard deviation of that Gaussian sigma Q. In both examples, we're going to take Q naught, the value of Q under the null hypothesis, as equal to 100, and in both examples, we're going to take sigma Q equal to 10. And finally, in both examples, we will take our significance level alpha equal to 0 0.05. Okay, let's start with example one. Okay, so for example one, we're going to take QA, the value of Q under the alternative hypothesis, as equal to 126.4. And as we said, we're going to take sigma Q equal to 10, independent of the value of Q true. So under the null hypothesis, Q measured will be Gaussian distributed around Q naught, that's equal to 100, and we show that in the blue curve. Under the alternative hypothesis, Q measured will be Gaussian distributed around QA, which is 126.4, and that's shown by the red curve. Okay, so in this case, QA is greater than Q0. So that means we're going to do a one-sided test where Q critical is going to be greater than Q0. Okay, so we saw in the previous video that for a one-sided test where QA is greater than Q0 and where we're using alpha equals 0.05, that Q critical is equal to Q0 plus 1.64 sigma Q. Now here sigma Q is equal to 10, so that means that Q critical is equal to 116.4. So this means that we will reject the null hypothesis, H0, if Q measured falls above Q critical, which is equal to 116.4. Okay, so to get the power of the test, we ask the following question. Under the alternative hypothesis, HA, what is the probability that we will correctly reject the null hypothesis, H0? 
this is going to be the same as the probability under the alternative hypothesis that Q measured will be greater than Q critical. And that probability is given by the red area under the HA curve. Now conveniently, we chose QA to be 126.4. That's 1 times sigma Q, which was 10, above the value of Q critical, which is 116.4. So we need the probability under HA that Q measured falls at a value greater than QA minus 1 sigma Q. Now, the probability for Q measured to fall within 1 sigma Q of the central value is about 68%. And we showed that in the video Features of the Gaussian or Normal Distribution Part 2. So the probability for Q measured to fall outside the 1 sigma band is about 32%. 16% of the time Q measured will fall above this band and 16% of the time it will fall below this band. So the probability that Q measured falls more than 1 sigma Q below QA and therefore below the value of Q critical is about 16%. This is the probability under the alternative hypothesis HA of failing to reject the null hypothesis H0. So this is what we call beta. So beta is about 16%. Now the probability under HA of rejecting the null hypothesis H0 is 1 minus beta. So that's about 84%. This is the power of the test. So this is the result that we're looking for, for example, 1. OK, now let's move on to example 2. For example 2, we're going to again take Q0 equal to 100, again take sigma Q equal to 10, and again take our significance level alpha equal to 0.05. But this time we're going to take QA, the value of Q under the alternative hypothesis, as 53.6. So here in the red curve we show that Q measured is Gaussian distributed around QA, which is 53.6. Now, this time, QA is less than Q0. So we're going to do a one-sided test where Q critical is going to be less than Q0. Now, for a one-sided test with QA less than Q0 and alpha equal to 0.05, Q critical is going to be equal to Q0 minus 1.64 sigma Q. Now again Q0 was equal to 100 and sigma Q was equal to 10. So here Q critical is equal to 100 minus 10 times 1.64 and that's equal to 83.6. So this means we're going to reject the null hypothesis H0 if Q measured ends up being less than Q critical which is equal to 83.6. OK, so we want the probability under the alternative hypothesis to reject the null hypothesis. This is the area under the alternative hypothesis HA curve to the left of Q critical. And we should just explicitly point out that not all of the HA curve is colored in red. 
So there is a tiny sliver of the HA curve that is inside the blue region. Okay, so we chose QA equal to 53.6, which conveniently is equal to Q critical minus 3 sigma Q. Now, from the video features of the Gaussian or normal distribution part 2, we can use the 68.95.99.7 rule and know that the probability, under the alternative hypothesis, of Q measured falling within 3 sigma Q of QA is about 99.7%. And here we should be a little bit more precise. It's actually more like 99.73%. So that means in about 0.27% of experiments, Q measured will fall outside of this 3 sigma band. Half of those 0.27% of experiments will fall above the 3 sigma Q range, and half will fall below. So this means about 0.13% will fall above and about 0.13% will fall below. So this tells us that the probability under the alternative hypothesis HA that Q measured will fall above Q critical is about 0.13%. And again, this is beta. The probability under the alternative hypothesis that we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so the probability that we will correctly reject the null is 1 minus beta, which here is about 99.87%. So that's 1 minus 0.13%. And that's our result for example 2. So this is the power of the test. And we should point out that in this latter example, the two Gaussians are farther apart, and they're easier to differentiate than what we saw in example 1. And that's related to the fact that the power of the test in this latter example is larger than what we saw in example 1. Okay, so let's very briefly summarize. Here we've seen two examples of calculating the power of a hypothesis test. If you found this video useful, you might be interested in the other videos in the hypothesis testing playlist.